Hi everybody, I am Net Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about an amniocentesis. So, let's get into it. So, first of all, what is an amniocentesis? This is a diagnostic prenatal exam. So some exams done prenatally are kind of mandatory. Everybody gets them no matter what. If they have risk factors, if they don't, if they have normal healthy pregnancies, whatever, everybody gets it done, like your blood type. And amniocentesis is not one of those, but it is very well known and definitely something you need to be familiar with when it comes to your maternal child class and your ATI for maternity. So, Let's get into what an amniocentesis is. So first of all, it's a diagnostic test. So what is the difference between a diagnostic test and a screening test? Because some prenatal exams are screening exams. So if you're getting a screening test done, it means that the results are likely. So if you have a positive screening result, your baby is more likely to have this condition. A diagnostic test is more accurate than a screening test. So an amniocentesis is about 99% accurate. What do they do? They insert a 20 gauge needle into the abdomen of the pregnant person. Typically they do not use numbing medication to do this. Um, and how do they know where they're going? They're going to use an ultrasound for guidance. And that's good too because the ultrasound is also going to keep an eye on baby to make sure baby is safe during the procedure. So with that needle, what are they going to do? They're going to aspirate some amniotic fluid. Approximately 20 to 30 cc's of amniotic fluid will get removed. This is a sterile procedure, although it can be done in the clinic setting. It doesn't need to be done in the hospital setting, depending on your hospital clinic situation where you live, but it is still sterile. And why are we doing this? What's the importance of this amniotic fluid? So your amniotic fluid contains fetal cells, and those fetal cells can tell us information about the baby. So it can tell us the sex of the baby and the genetic makeup of the baby. Now, there are some dangers associated with this, so we'll talk about those in a sec. Doing this just to determine the sex of the baby is not recommended. It's too dangerous just to get this information. The reason we do it is that genetic makeup. This can be done at 15 to 20 weeks, so early on, and then in the third trimester. Most often, an amniocentesis will be done early on. And what are we looking for in that 15 to 20 week time frame? Chromosomal analysis, so any anomalies in the genetic makeup of the fetus. That's what they're looking for. In the third trimester amniocentesis, this is done to determine fetal lung maturity. So if the baby needs to be born a little bit early, um, what are its risk factors and its likelihood of survival? How good are its lungs? How good is the quality of the lungs? Are they producing something called surfactant, which is going to help them breathe when they are born? So two different reasons it can be done. The majority of them are done for chromosome analysis. We know not everybody gets an amniocentesis, but let's talk about the people that might. So those who are advanced maternal age, which is over age 35, they might have this test recommended to them. If they have a history of a previous child who has a chromosomal anomaly, so that means they're at higher risk for having another one. If they suspect that the infant has a neural tube defect, if they have a history of recurrent losses, so they have no issues with getting pregnant, but they have a hard time maintaining a pregnancy, this might be a reason they want to look into. And then if we know that the parents are carriers of genetic conditions that they want to screen for. And this procedure we talked about earlier, it does use a large needle and it does involve removing amniotic fluid. So there are some risks associated with that. Most of these risks are very, very rare, which is a good thing. So the first of which is leaking of fluid. If a little bit of fluid leaks out, usually that's not that big of a deal. 
Um, a needle injury, this is very rare, but what happens here is when they stick the needle in, maybe the fetus like wiggles around too much and they end up, you know, poking it with the needle and it can cause some damage. That very rarely happens though. Infection, just like any time we introduce um, a foreign object into the body, there is that risk for infection, although this is a sterile procedure. So that hopefully minimizes that risk. RH sensitization. So if mom, if the pregnant person is RH negative and the fetus is RH positive, there is a little bit of a risk that doing this procedure can cause that blood to mix. Some of mom's blood can be exposed to baby's blood. And then infection transmission. So if the pregnant person has something like HIV or hepatitis C, there is a small risk that those infections could be transmitted to the baby. What is the nurse's role when it comes to the amniocentesis? Well, first, emotional support, that's a big one, because remember, people aren't getting these done routinely. They're getting them done for a reason because they're worried, so they're gonna be a little anxious. So emotional support before, during, and after the procedure is going to be big. We can witness the informed consent. So this is a medical procedure, so they do need to sign a consent. Remember, it is the doctor's responsibility to get the consent and to explain the risks and benefits, but we can serve as a witness. If the patient is RH negative, after the procedure, we wanna make sure to give them Rogam because they could have a little bit of bleeding. A little bit of bleeding and some mild cramping after the procedure is okay. Things we want to assess for, fever or other signs of infection, a lot of bleeding, right? That would not be normal. Cramping that's more than expected, like contractions. Contractions would not be expected, that would not be normal. And decreased fetal movement. So we want to make sure that baby's heart rate is still good and they're still wiggling around in there. We have to do lots of patient education. So educating them about what signs to report when they go home. After the procedure, they're gonna stay in the clinic or the hospital, wherever they got the procedure done, for a few hours so that the nurse can monitor them and make sure everything's okay. Once they get the okay to go home, then they're gonna go home on bed rest. By day two, they're gonna have like light activity and then by day three, they can assume like normal activities. So educating them about that. And then a couple of other things I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that kind of didn't fit in anywhere else. So rarely, but sometimes, an amniocentesis can be used to treat polyhydramnios. And if you remember, polyhydramnios is when you have an excess amount of amniotic fluid. So greater than 2000 mLs. So this can remove some of that fluid. There is a rare risk of miscarriage, which is why I said in the beginning that doing this just to find out the sex of the baby, that's not a good reason, right? The risk and the benefits don't outweigh each other here. And the last big piece of information we need to educate parents about is this test does not check for every birth defect. It checks for a lot of them, but not every single little thing. So we want to make sure that they know that the baby could still have some sort of anomaly that this test does not look for. So, just so that they're aware. And that was my video on amniocentesis. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If not, I'll see you on the next one.